If your EcoSmart electric tankless water heater is showing an E5 error code or just not supplying hot enough water, you might want to install a flow regulator. In this video, I'll show you how I did it. As always, I'm not a plumber, so don't take this as advice. This is entertainment purposes only. It's just how I did it. First, let's talk about the issue. The E5 error code means that for the given input temperature, the water heater isn't able to keep up with the flow of water that's coming through your system. This could mean you end up with a bathtub full of lukewarm water. The flow regulator will cap how much water can flow through your water heater. This might mean you can't fill your bathtub as quickly, but it'll avoid the lukewarm water situation. If you limit it too much, you might end up with low pressure for your hot water in your showers. So it's a little bit about finding a good balance. I'll put a link to the product in the description below. For this house in Southern California in December, the EcoSmart 27 kilowatt heater is able to keep up with two showers. But when I try to fill a bathtub, I run into the E5 error code. The two showers seem to use about three gallons per minute, whereas the bathtub can go all the way up to five gallons per minute. And that will trigger the E5 error code. Before I install the flow restrictor, I need to turn off the power to the water heater. This is a pretty powerful electric tankless water heater, so there are three 50 amp circuits that need to be shut off. And now I'm running some hot water in the kitchen sink and I can confirm that the water heater is not coming on. I can hear the water flowing through. Now that I have the power turned off, I can turn the water off to the water heater. So now I've turned off the cold water. I want to connect the flow restrictor to the output here. So I'm going to need to disconnect this. Of course, likely going to drain some water out, so I've got my tub ready. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to see if I can drain some water inside the house. Okay, I drained some water in the bathtub inside. Uh, now I'm going to go ahead and disconnect this. There wasn't really that much water in there, so hopefully we won't get too much of a splash here. Okay, not too bad. Okay, this is the kit I received in the mail. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description of the video. It's uh, pretty straightforward. It comes with a little instructional guide. And a few different options of sizing. So this one can do anywhere from two gallons per minute to five gallons per minute limitation, depending on the size of your water heater, the temperature of the water. Right now the water temperature is about 65 degrees and I've got the 27 kilowatt water heater. So I'm gonna go with the four gallons per minute limitation. So you can see the instructions on the back. That's step one. Step two is you gotta do it right. Step three, place in the fitting as seen below. Ensure tight fit. So that's what I'm gonna do here. I chose the four gallon per minute option. Place that in there. It's in there tight. It snaps right in. And then there's gonna be this rubber washer and that'll give you a tight seal against the water heater. 
So now I should be ready to install this in the water heater. You can see inside here, this rubber washer creates a compression fitting, so you shouldn't need any plumber's tape here. Uh, I'm not sure about this side, I'll have to check what's on the other side. But let's go look. Okay, I'm back here at the water heater, a little bit better shot than I had before. You can see inside there, there's actually a rubber washer inside there as well. So that's also compression fitting, so no need for plumber's tape on this. So I'm gonna install the flow restrictor up here at the outlet of the water heater. A little bit of a tight squeeze there. There's a couple flat spots and give you a little bit of ability to tighten this on. If you have a better plumbing wrench, you could probably save yourself a lot of effort. I'm gonna hope that that's good enough. I don't check for leaks later. This could be a little more tricky. Okay, it's on there pretty tight. So now that I've closed this, closed this back together, I need to run some water through this before I turn the power back on. If I turn the power on while it's just set up like this, there may be air bubbles that could cause damage to the water heater. So I've got my cold water supply line up here. I'm gonna turn this on and so give me a good opportunity to check for leaks. Okay, and I've got my bathtub on. So this is flowing now, but you can see that the power hasn't come on yet. And that's what I want. I want this to fill up with water so that I don't have any air bubbles. Just checking again for leaks. Looks like we're all in good shape. I might wipe this down after I'm done here. I'll turn that bathtub off again. So now that the water's off. So now I can turn the power back on to the water heater. Remember I need to do all three switches here. And we're set. Now that the power is turned back on, I'm gonna run some hot water and you should see this come back on. Okay, this is not what I expected. So even with the flow regulator, I'm getting the E5 error. The bathtub can still go past what the water heater can handle. I'll use the menu in the water heater to check the flow rate. More on that later. So the bathtub is still using 3.2 gallons. It's less than the four gallons we expected, but still more than the heater can handle. Okay, we can see it's 124. I just turned on a sink. You can actually check in this debug mode. If you look online, you can find these manuals. If you press this down for about seven seconds, you get to this menu 
And there you're seeing the input temperature, 63 degrees. Uh, if I turn to the left, I see the output temperature, 119, pretty close. And I can see the flow, this is 1.3 gallons per minute. It's just a sink in the bathroom. So there you go, should be all set. So you might be wondering, if I'm still getting the E5 error code, was this project even worthwhile? Well, maybe, maybe not. I did get it limited down to 3.2 gallons per minute, which should lessen the risk of a cold bathtub. I was a little bit disappointed that the flow regulator wasn't as precise as hoped. I used the four gallons per minute insert and it was still letting 3.2 gallons through, so you might have to play around with the different options. I was also a little disappointed that the heater couldn't keep up with 3.2 gallons per minute, uh, that the bathtub was able to run, uh, but hopefully this should make for an overall better experience. I can still run both showers just fine, no issue, so there's really pretty little downside to this, uh, but some room for improvement. Hopefully this video helps you understand a little bit more about your water heater and help you make a decision whether or not you might want to add one of these flow regulators. If you liked the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you next time.